actually see it. I just think it helps a lot more to learn about it and it's just a lot more interesting to kids. Today in Across the Fence we're cracking open a story that involves thousands of Vermont school kids who are getting a hands-on educational this experience hands -on through the science. UVM Extension 4-H program. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Embryology is basic science. In simple terms, it's about the development of an embryo from a fertile egg to a fully developed chick. The 4-H Embryology program teaches the basic science and much more to students across the state. Both teachers and students applaud the program for its hands-on approach to learning. We're going to start with a look at what's hatching in the 4-H embryology program. Here's Across the Fences, Keith Silva, who visited a school in southern Vermont where embryology is a classroom favorite. Mrs. Fasians, Mrs. Manning, could you pass out those eggs? Kern Hatton School science teacher Tom Fontaine is about to give the students in his biology class an uh, un egg -spected surprise. Oh, it's not an egg? What is it? It's what came from the egg. I'd like you to hold it. Everybody's going to get a chance. And observe it, please. The eggs hatched a few days ago. This is the first time that these students have held the chicks. In what is becoming right of spring, the UVM Extension 4-H Embryology Program provides grades K-12 through across Vermont with a hands-on opportunity to study the developmental process from fertilized egg to fluffy feathered chick. It's a program that turns teachers and students alike into mother hens. I like the fact of being able to get up close and personal with the chicks. It's just that kind of thing where you know, not every kid gets to do an embryology, you know, not every kid gets to live up close and turn the eggs every day like a mother hen would and <clears throat> take care of the eggs as if you were the one. I didn't do this so that they were cute. I did this for science purposes. As opposed to only learning from a textbook, this project uses the 4-H model of learning by doing to give students more life experience. It's there in real life instead of like learning out of a textbook or just like looking at pictures, like you get to actually see it. So I just think it helps a lot more to learn about it and it's just a lot more interesting to kids. You actually get to see it close up and you like know that you're actually there. And you know that it's true, and you can like say that in real life you actually got to see this happening. All of a sudden, science became real. When you have something like this and you get to actually feel the eggs, and when you see the chicks hatching, it, it makes it feel real, and it, you learn it a lot better. Like, if you were to see all this, the steps of hatching on a page, it's really a lot different than having that hands-on experience. The 4-H Embryology program targets school science curriculums while allowing teachers the flexibility to also include reading, writing, and arithmetic. It's part of life. Fontaine's class is going beyond biology to include some gross anatomy by dissecting an egg that didn't hatch. This is hands-on science at its greatest. When an egg is actually cracked open and we look inside of it, I have to be very calm about it. It's, it's not easy for a teacher to become when you're not sure what's going to be in there or when these eggs actually hatch and something I've never seen before. So it's new to me. And so I try to tell them and coach them beforehand, you're going to see a lot of intriguing things that you may think of in that G word as gross, but try not to look at it as gross. Try to look at it as this is something I've never seen before. So it, it really isn't gross. It's intriguing. It's cool. It's neat. In the past, Fontaine has tapped Vermont 4-H for other in-school enrichment programs like forensic science and a course in grafting apple trees. Embryology is the latest development between the Kern Hatton School and UVM Extension's 4-H program. Earlier we talked about chickens and... Kern Hatton joins over 100 classrooms across the state that participate in this educational enrichment activity how the embryo actually grows. The UVM extension has been there at my fingertips. They are there for you every step of the way. So they've been there to give me incubators, 
to go and buy the eggs, to go and get the eggs and bring them to me. It's unheard of. There's probably teachers out there watching this video going, they do? Oh man, how lucky you are. We are. We're really lucky to have that relationship with the UVM Extension. I can't thank them enough. It's powerful. It's powerful stuff. And I hope that educators who watch this will say, you know some, I'm, I'm going to call them because they, they should. They really should. Fontaine's enthusiasm for this project has spread to other classrooms. Younger current Hatton students made art projects and got to see the chicks hatch live via a webcam. Encouraging ownership outside the classroom provides an intangible benefit that current Hatton principal Tom Fauner applauds. And then it's not somebody force feeding it on them, it's what they want to do. And it carries over. This fun, cool stuff, as they would call it in science class, it carries over into English, math social studies um, and you can see them grow as individuals and want to enhance their knowledge base that's what it's all about so you, you start with the staff and UVM it's fun to watch the students agree there's a lot of benefits and uh, other things that comes with the hands-on experience uh, like uh, it makes it feel real and more than just coming out of a textbook. You, you learn a lot more when it's hands-on. Once you learn something about something, like you always have to think, like it's never gonna go away. You always have that knowledge with you, so you'll always think about di things differently. New knowledge, new ideas, and new experiences. There's always something hatching when it comes to the UVM 4-H Embryology program. In Westminster, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. Well, thanks, Keith. Joining me here in the studio is UVM Extension 4-H educator Martha Manning, who is the statewide coordinator of the embryology program. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. I don't think I've ever been so excited, seeing kids so excited in class with when they came out with those chicks. It's really a way to excite them about learning, not just about science, but all different types of learning. And it's really rewarding to see um, how it comes to life in the classroom. You talk about learning. Can you give me some examples of what it is that the kids learn from this particular program? Well, I think it's really important that the students have the experience of learning to think like a scientist. They get to um, experience what a scientist would actually see in that they're not just reading about it in a book. They're really getting to experience um, what it takes to take that fertile egg. Um, they're putting it in an incubator. Some of the Classrooms decide to turn the eggs by hand, which means you've got to be responsible and turn them, you know, three to five times every day. Why do they have to be turned? By turning the egg, it keeps the embryo from adhering to the inside of, of the shell. Mm -hmm. So you have to turn the egg as the mother hen would turn the egg um, with her body by, you know, shifting her body weight or by moving on and off the nest. So they learn that. They learn how to monitor the humidity. Um, you know, and they also are learning to be aware of where does their food come from. Well, that's a huge responsibility to be in charge of this living creature. Exactly, and but they find it, you know, they're learning the responsibility, um, but they're enjoying that and they're charting it and they're, you know, writing about it and journaling. And um, the neat thing with the school that we saw on the clip, the Kern Hatton School, um, with um, Tom Fontaine, who was the science instructor, was that. Um, they used a webcam and they shared not only what was going on in their science classroom, but they shared it out with the rest of the school by using uh, some computer technology and uh, smart boards. So it was shared with other students who then became interested in, gee, what's going on over in the science classroom. So the school, the teacher, took this program that you offered and sort of expanded on it. Yes, absolutely. They did a phenomenal job. Um, expanding on it into other curriculum areas. Um, they used it for art. They did some neat art projects about um, chickens and poultry and eggs. Um, there was also math um, where you're doing the calculations and what the students learned is through the beginning of the program if you ask the questions do you think the eggs will get heavier or lighter during the incubation process normally they're going to tell you the egg will get heavier because they see that the embryo is developing into the chick, when in reality, the eggs get lighter. Interesting, because you would just assume the chick would weigh more than the embryo. But because of the air exchanges that are going on and, and such, um, the eggs actually become lighter. 
How do you assess the program? Well, there's a number of ways to assess the program. Probably one of the easiest ways to assess the program is just um, through discussions and feedback um, with the educators and the students themselves. Um, and it's nice because this program has been going on for more than 25 years. And to talk to people who experience the program as young students who are now adults, to learn um, what they remember about the program and how that has impacted them um, and how they think about life in general. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot involved in the embryology program in terms of equipment like the incubators as well as the curriculum. That's all supplied by <coughs> Extension? We offer um, schools and educators the opportunity to purchase equipment. Um, years ago, UVM used to own that, but now we encourage them to own their own equipment. Um, we can connect them with a supply where we kind of act as the wholesaler and pass them on um, a good price, or they can purchase um, equipment uh, locally. So, you know, they have options as to how they um, progress. We do provide them with fertile eggs that they purchase, which come either out of Yukon or out of a Vermont poultry house, depending on the type of uh, bird they'd like to raise. It must help to have an enthusiastic educator like the one that we saw in oh, the video. They're, they, the educators are the heart and soul of the program because I can't be in a hundred different schools. So it's the educators who really make the program the success that it is. What are some of the reflections that you hear, not only from the educators, but maybe some of the students too as well? I think it was really interesting to see, like with the Kernhatton students um, last year, the interest in learning about the eggs maybe that didn't hatch. Um, and they, you know, they learned and made observations on those chicks that did hatch. But there was an interest in, gee, what happened and what can we learn from the eggs that maybe didn't hatch? Which we saw in the video is kind of an emotional time for the kids. It's hard to, hard it to see. It was, but yet they were really engaged um, and they were really interested in, gee, what, what is there? Um, Throughout the process, they had done something called candling, mm -hmm. in which you shine a bright light through the egg, so you can see which eggs are actually um, fertile and developing an embryo inside. So they knew that those eggs that we were going to open um, did have basically fully developed um, embryos, and then they could learn why maybe had they not hatched. Hmm. Um, so as much as at first they might have thought it was gross, a lot of it did go back to the way it was presented to them um, by Mr. Fontaine in that it was a, an opportunity to learn. So what happens to all these chicks after class? Well actually last year was very interesting. It was the first year that we actually had a school and that was the Hannaford Career Center in Middlebury took a number of the meat bird chicks and they actually um, through their um, classes at the tech center, they designed some uh, hoop houses for the chicks and they raised them out. Um, you know, they had students who went in and moved the hoop houses on a daily basis, um, who did the feeding and the caring. And then after those um, birds were processed, the uh, meat was sold to Middlebury College. And so it was really interesting. It's the first time we've actually had schools um, take the interest in growing them out. Normally, uh, schools have the option to return the chicks uh, to us, and we find 4-H uh, members or uh, individuals who would like to raise them. Mm -hmm. Well, the example that we saw in the video was an in-school program. Are there other ways that 4-H uh, offers the embryology program? We have even some after-school programs who have done it. We have some child care centers who maybe have school-age children who have participated. Um, and one of the most growing areas is with homeschool families um, who do the project right in their own homes or maybe with a group that gets together. So there's a lot of different ways that embryology can be um, delivered to youth. Now there are a lot of other hands-on opportunities too through 4-H for kids as well. There are many, many non-traditional projects. I mean, we have the traditional clubs that most people think of, um, but we've also got after-school programs, um, summer enrichment type programs. Um, you know, one of the popular ones going on now is robotics. And even for young students, um, we use a Lego WeDo product, 
and forensics, um, GPS, mm -hmm. uh, computer technology, there are programs around energy, um, all forms of technology, whether it's digital photography or, or even filmmaking. So if a parent or teacher is interested in, in the embryology program or any other 4-H offering, what should they do? I would recommend that they contact their um, either their local extension office or you can call the state 4-H office and that is at 1-800-571-0668. Terrific, Martha. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.